finishing Cortison White Oak in a way that makes the figure jump out is actually a pretty simple thing to do, and you have a handful of ways to do that. So, why don't I demonstrate a couple of those ways right now? We'll cover three techniques. One for highlighting the figure with a clear finish, another for using pigment stain, and then a third on getting a beautiful mission style finish. If you like the light tan color of quarters on white oak, you can finish it with a clear natural finish like this. That's just a clear lacquer on there and the figure looks okay, but it doesn't look its best. You can make a really marked improvement by applying a Danish oil first. Danish oil is just a tongue oil and a varnish blend and it gets down deep into the wood and really helps the figure to jump right out. And it actually works in just about any angle of light too. Uh, this is kind of nice about it. You don't get that with a clear lacquer or a clear varnish, but what you don't get with the Danish oil is a protection of those, but that's not that big of a deal. Once Danish oil dries, you can top coat it with your lacquer, your varnish, your shellac, whatever it is that you want. And then you get the benefits of a bold finish and a protective finish. So here's how you apply it. Danish oil is real easy to apply. Just use a soft, clean rag and then wipe it on. And then a nice optional technique is to take some fine grit, wet dry sandpaper and sand the workpiece while it's still wet. The wood dust soaks up the oil and then fills in the open pores, giving you an extra beautiful finish. You wait 30 minutes and then lightly wipe off any excess wet oil. And then once it's all dry, just put on your top coat. But there are other ways to make the figure look great and to get a traditional look. In general, you have to darken the pores. So one of the cool things about this wood is that there are no pores in the figure. So as you darken the pores, the figure jumps out even more. Now there are a couple ways to do that, and in this case, I've used a penetrating oil stain. Now one trick to do if you're not thrilled with the look once the stain has dried, because that stain can color the figure a little too much. So just hit it with some fine grain sandpaper once it's dried, and what that'll do is it'll pull the stain off the figure, but still leave it in the pores. And that's a pretty good trick to do there. But there is another way to do this that I think comes out a little bit better. Use a stainable grain filler, like this. And I really like the way this one came out. So a grain filler helps get the stain packed into the pores and off of the ray figure to better enhance that figure. And because the filler does the job of filling tiny pores, you get a much smoother surface. So when you apply your top coat after the filler dries, you actually get a better looking finish than with the stain alone. So here's how that goes on. This type of wood grain filler has a creamy tan color. So I've mixed it with a dark oil stain to get this chocolate color. One part stain to two parts filler. And then you just apply it in the direction of the grain. Then you wait about five minutes and wipe it off going across the grain. And if there's still some streaks, lightly wipe it in the direction of the grain. And then there's always this tried and true finishing process for a dark mission finish that's found in books by finisher Jeff Jewett. And the results are quite astonishing, but it's a really simple process and you can do it. So you establish your base color first with a dye, and then you seal it, and then you put a little stain on it, and then you top coat it with the, your lacquer, your varnish, whatever it is you want. Here's how I did this piece. Working quickly, I use a diluted brown maple dye and let it dry for about 5 minutes. And then sand it with a 220 grit sanding sponge to pull the dye off of the figure. And then repeat the dyeing and sanding until I like the color. In this case, I made 3 coats of dye. After that dries, it's time to put on a thin coat of sealer, and de-wax shellac is a great choice because it's a universal sealer. And then, scuff sand it if needed to remove the little nubs. Now you want to take a dark gel stain and wipe it on. And then there's no need to wait for it to dry, just go ahead and wipe it off. Packing the gel into the pores is the key. Once the gel stain dries, usually in about 8 hours or so, then you can apply your top coat of lacquer, varnish, or shellac. I tried a few different dyes before settling on this one as my favorite sample of a dark mission finish, but one of my tests gave me this, right here. 
Now, at first, I really didn't care for it. It's this really bright red. Uh, didn't, didn't strike me as all that nice. But until I saw this in the mail. Came a few days after that. There's this blanket chest on the cover of Woodworker's Journal, and that color is kind of reddish, and I noticed that they're actually pretty dang close. So if you like that color, here's how I did it. So the only difference between this red color and this rich brown color is the dye. It's the same sealer and then the same stain on top. The dye I used here is Balin Solar Lux Medium Brown Walnut Color. I know, it's a strange name for a color that comes out so red, but nevertheless, there it is. It diluted it 50% and then applied three coats, scuff sanding in between each one, applied a little layer of sealer, and then that dark walnut stain. And it came out like that, and looks quite a bit like that blanket chest. So there's a whole bunch of ways to finish Cortisone White Oak to make the figure jump out. None of them are all that difficult to do, but they do take a little bit of time, such it is with wood finishing. Hope you learned something here today. Thanks for watching.